Whoosh! Lonnie Johnson's Super Soaking Stream of Inventions by Chris Barton Every day brought a challenge for young Lonnie Johnson. The challenge of finding space for his stuff. Six Johnson kids were squeezed into their parents' small house in Mobile, Alabama. Lonnie would have loved a workshop of his own, but there just wasn't room. There was nowhere to keep his rocket kits. Bamboo shooters, rubber band guns, erector set, go-kart engine, bolts and screws and other spare parts his dad let him bring in from the shed, and various other things he'd hauled back from the junkyard. Lonnie loved building and creating. Ideas for inventions just kept on flowing. He learned how to make rockets from scratch. Kids at school gathered to watch Lonnie launch them. And he learned how to make rocket fuel. When it caught fire in the kitchen, Lonnie's mom didn't make him stop. She just sent him to work outside. Lonnie wanted to spend his life designing things, building things, and getting them to work. He wanted to be an engineer. However, Lonnie took an exam that said he would not make a very good one. His dream had been challenged. Lonnie was discouraged. But he knew that whoever had graded his test hadn't met Linux. Inspired by a TV show, Lonnie had built his own robot. He made it out of scrap metal and named it Linux. Compressed air cylinders and valves allowed Linux's body to turn and its arms to move. The switches came from an old broken jukebox. Lonnie used a tape recorder to program Linux, and as a bonus, the reels looked like eyes. Lonnie wanted to enter his creation in a science fair, but he couldn't get the transmitter to work. Without it, Lonnie couldn't send commands to Linux. Science fairs came and went. Lonnie missed one and then another, until he got an idea. Now, Lonnie may or may not have asked before borrowing his little sister's walkie-talkie. But it fixed the transmission issue. His school's team took freshly finished Linux to a 1968 science fair at the University of Alabama, where only five years earlier, African-American students hadn't even been allowed. Having to compete in a place that still wasn't very welcoming now that was a challenge with a capital C. Against other schools from all over the state, Lonnie's team won first place. Soon, Lonnie left home to go to college at Tuskegee Institute, where he stood out as a self-confident, insightful, creative thinker. He stood out as a student who asked the right questions, precisely defined problems, and formulated solutions. And he stood out as the guy who built his own booming sound system out of cast-off electronics. It even had lights that flashed in sync with the beat. Lonnie sometimes studied right in the middle of his own parties. The extra studying paid off. He became an engineer after graduation, and that took him beyond Alabama. Way beyond. When NASA was sending an orbiter and probe called Galileo to Jupiter, the space agency needed to ensure a constant supply of power to the orbiter's computer memory. The engineer who had to figure out how to do it was Lonnie. His challenge was to come up with a lightweight backup system, able to keep essential functions going in case the main power was lost. It wasn't easy, it wasn't obvious, but Lonnie found a solution. Some at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory doubted his idea would work. Lonnie convinced them it would. He was right. As it photographed Jupiter and its moons, Galileo was supported by the power package that Lonnie designed. Much of what we know about Jupiter could have been at risk in a power failure, if not for Lonnie. Ideas for other problems to solve just kept on flowing. They flowed whether Lonnie was working with hundreds of people at NASA or up late tinkering with his own inventions in, finally, his own workshop. 
Lonnie knew the world's millions of refrigerators and air conditioners needed a new cooling system, one that didn't use R12, a chemical that was bad for the environment. He had an idea for using water and air pressure instead. To test his idea, he made a pump and nozzle, connected them to the bathroom faucet, turned on the faucet, turned on the pump, and then... Whoosh! The stream that blasted across the bathroom was so powerful, it created a curtain-swirling breeze. It also gave Lonnie an idea for yet another invention. This, he thought, would make a great water gun. First, he had to find or make the parts, including a pump small enough for a child to handle. Then he had to glue the parts together into a prototype, an early version with room for improvement. Finally, Lonnie tested his strange-looking squirt gun at a picnic. Does it really work? a man asked. Sure, Lonnie said. Want to see? Lonnie worked the pump, which squeezed air into a chamber. When he pulled the trigger, the air escaped, forcing the water out with a whoosh. For a water battle to be a fair fight, there couldn't be just one of Lonnie's water guns. He needed help making more. So he went to toy company, after toy company, after toy company. The word no flowed again and again. But finally, one company said yes. It planned to make his water gun. Lonnie also had other projects, a water-propelled toy airplane, two kinds of engines, and his cooling system. He found investors to provide the money for turning his ideas into products people could buy. He made a leap of faith, quit his day job, and devoted himself full time to inventing. But soon, each plan fell apart even the one for the water gun. These things sometimes happen, but when they happen one after another to the same person, well, that's some pretty bad luck. Lonnie didn't have a job. He didn't have the money he'd been counting on. He and his family had to move out of their home and into a little apartment. He was angry and scared. But Lonnie had dealt with challenges all his life. He knew a lot about solving problems, and he still believed in his inventions, especially the water gun. Lonnie went looking for another toy company. In 1989, he found a toy maker who was interested in seeing the water gun, if Lonnie ever happened to be in Philadelphia. But don't make a special trip, the guy said. Lonnie made a special trip. In his wife's suitcase, he carried a new prototype. He unpacked it, filled the tank with water, pumped the gun until the air pressure was good and high, and whoosh! Wow! Kids everywhere agreed with that wow. Lonnie's water gun, called the Super Soaker, became a smash hit. In no time, there were super soakers in backyards and on beaches, in parks and on playgrounds, each sale of a super soaker put a little money into Lonnie's pocket. All those hours, all those years that Lonnie spent in his workshop had paid off big time. Now he could afford to do just about anything he wanted. So what did Lonnie do? He got a bigger workshop, which is where you'll find him today, because facing challenges, solving problems, and building things are what Lonnie Johnson loves to do and his ideas just keep on flowing. So, what does a rocket engineer do on a hot summer day? Invent the world's greatest water gun, of course. Lonnie Johnson had to face many challenges as an inventor. He had to hear no so many times. But even though people didn't understand his vision or see his potential, he didn't let that stop him. He kept working and solving problems because that's what engineers do, until finally somebody said yes. Let's build a water bottle super soaker. Hold a bendy straw up to the water bottle. We're going to put a hole in the water bottle about an inch below the bendy part of the straw. Carefully press a pin or a thumbtack into the water bottle. 
Use a sharpened pencil to widen the hole so that the straw can fit in it. Line up the point of the pencil with the hole and gently press it through. You don't have to go all the way, just until it's big enough for the straw to fit. Grab some clay and wrap it around the straw where it meets the water bottle. The goal is to press out any air and seal it completely. Work the clay, smoothing and flattening it to the edges of the bottle and the straw, making sure that it seals as well as you can. If there are gaps in the seal, the air will escape instead of forcing the water out through the straw. Lonnie's Super Soaker uses pressurized air to drive the water out of the spout. We can do the same thing with a balloon. When you blow air into a balloon, the balloon stretches to hold it, but it wants to squeeze back to its regular size, so the air inside the balloon is under pressure, just like the air inside the chamber of a super soaker. Twist the top of the balloon and pin it with a clothespin to keep it shut. Now we have a chamber of compressed air and a separate chamber of water. Let's head outside to combine the two. Without undoing the clothespin, stretch the opening of the balloon and fit it over the top of the bottle. And that's it! Our water bottle super soaker is ready! When you're ready, take off the clothespin and untwist the balloon to join the two chambers. And... Whoosh! The pressurized air pushes the water through the only available opening, the straw. This homemade water gun may not stand up too well in a real super soaker battle, but it sure is a fun way to understand how they work. Keep inventing new ways to have fun, just like NASA engineer and super soaker inventor Lonnie Johnson. For more information about receiving STEAM kits in the mail, visit the Kids and Families page at coosbaylibrary.org.